Hey, what is going on guys? It's Vinny Hart here at you doing doing day. And you know, I think it's time I reveal to you guys my secret identity. That's right, yours truly is in fact the one, the only hero, Nerd Boy. Nerd Boy! Once again, a day is saved, thanks to Nerd Boy. Nerd Boy! Uh, Vinny, oh, what are you doing? Oh, hey, Joe. I just had the craziest dream. I was Nerd Boy. Yeah, that's, that's, that's great and all, but could you just tone it down just a little bit? Oh, Joe, you big joker. No, really, it's a problem. The neighbors are complaining a lot. You can't stop, genius. Get out, please. Anyway, that brings me to today's topic, The Incredibles games. The Incredibles is one of my favorite films and was the first superhero film that I ever got into as a kid. I mean, to be fair, back in its day before we had this oversaturation of superhero films, is arguably the best superhero film of its time. So you can imagine how stoked I was to find out that after 14 years, we're finally getting the sequel this movie truly deserves. I, mean, I, just, I, just, I just realized it was 14 years ago. It means I was eight when I saw this movie. Wow. In addition to this, however, TD Fusion also recently released this, The Incredibles LEGO Game, which features the story arcs of both films. LEGO games have always been super solid and some of my favorite games of all time, so I'm definitely looking forward to checking this one out. However, today, we're going to be looking at some of the original times The Incredibles was made into video games. Let's do this! The Incredibles games are actually pretty near and dear to me personally, mostly due to the fact that one of the first games I ever played as a kid was The Incredibles for the Game Boy Advance. I actually only played this game once as a kid, but I remember it super vividly. I must have been maybe 8 at the time. I was at this one kid's house, it was the only time we ever went there, but he was the only person I ever met growing up whose parents could afford any kind of video game system. So naturally, he had every kind of video game system available and I was captivated. Also, if you're watching whatever your name was, um, I would like to apologize for just how bad I was at that baseball game we played on your PlayStation. I understand now why you were so annoyed at my incompetence because I was not good at that game at all. Also the fact that I forgot what your name was. That's probably worth an apology as well. This game is actually pretty decent for the most part. It plays like the classic beat-em-ups like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Battletoads, which makes a lot of sense for an Incredibles game. I especially like this part of the beginning where these two thugs are just staying here and as soon as Mr. Incredible shows up they're just like, oh man we gotta get out of here! And for those of you who may be curious at just how bad it was at video games, this was actually the first part I got stuck on in this game back as a kid. The tutorial. What do I do? Mashing A doesn't do anything! B doesn't either! Why won't the text box go away? Oh, this game is an R button. I never realized there were trigger buttons on that back in the day. Suck it, six year old me! Incidentally, this was the part that Billy, or whatever his name was, had to help me with. So, thanks for that. Also, thanks a bunch for taking the game away when I finally got to the part with Frozen. I was like, the best part! And then you take away just as if you can't literally play it whenever you want. Seriously, you suck, dude. Some scars just never heal. Actually, no scars heal. Speaking of dudes sucking, however, these bad guys really need to rethink their life goals because they are completely hopeless in this career path. Seriously, you guys, gotta start doing better than this. Okay, and now they're shooting at me. Ow! Hey, guys, I- Ow! Okay, I'm, I'm gonna jump kick the gun again. No! Alright, come on. What? Why? Yeah, I did it. Showtime. I know I shouldn't be spoiling at this point, but I know it happens later in the movie, so let's just waste this kid while we have the chance. Qualcomm! This game actually has a really decent combat system. The death of field really adds an interesting challenge. It's easy enough that a kid could pick it up and have fun, but hard enough for a grown lad like myself to find a little bit of challenge here. Admittedly, it's not much, but little things like the enemies changing up, there being different tactics you have to use to beat different enemies or bosses, and speaking of the bosses, this Omnitory is actually a lot easier to beat than I thought it'd be. That is until you use a stomp technique, which for some reason I can never dodge. Alright, we're back, got our cool suit ready for more action. Suddenly, the Omnidroid appears. Oh, oh, 
Okay, that works. We're doing this now. Mr. Incredible doesn't even look like he cares. He just got grabbed by Yam Joy. He's like, well, here we go again. All right. Get the bird. We see Gibbs calling me first, but get the fucking bird. Why can't I kill the fucking bird? Wizard, stop hiding from me, bird. I will kill you and your entire race. Your entire robot bird race. This wasn't the only version of this game, however. There was also one for the PlayStation, PC, and GameCube. So, yeah. What are you waiting for? You need permission to start the game? How dare you, Frozone? I'll have you know, I'm an independent young nerd. I can do whatever I want. I don't, I don't need permission from nobody. But I mean, you know, I can check with my mom real quick. Just be sure. That's what I'm talking about. Let's get this thing on. Okay, let's just calm the heck down here, Frozone. It's just a game, man. Let's try to contain ourselves a little here. So starting out, these guys are blowing stuff up. And Mr. Incredible's super ticked off about it. Oh yeah, and also Frozone does a tutorial the whole time. And I don't just mean a friendly, can you do that thing? He tells you everything you need to do multiple times. Yo, what are you waiting for? Alright, you don't know what to do. It's cool. Press this button to activate your punch. Use your incredible punches. Don't forget that the more you charge, the more damage you do. Press this button to activate your incredible punches. It's just a punch, dude. You don't activate it. Mr. Incredible, everybody. Symbol of justice and all around good guy. Whoa. Huh. I think I just probably did now. Oh, well, I'm sure you had it coming. Okay, yeah, you bad guys have no excuse right now. A little later in, Elastigirl shows up with those hips! She instantly beats Mr. Incredible in every way, not only because of that, but also because she's a much larger reach, which I guess is kind of her thing. But it makes taking on bags much easier. And also, a little boring. Just take, for instance, right here. All these guys don't even stand a chance. All I'm doing here is matching X. And I'm winning. Oh yeah, she also likes to talk a lot. Which wouldn't be terrible if it weren't for the fact that they use the same annoying lines over and over and over again. It's not going to slow me down. Be that problem. These guys could be trouble. Fuck saying those bad boys are fine. I gotta be more careful. I gotta say though. I feel like for a superhero, I'm not being very heroic. I mean, all these guys are just straight up murder. There's no beating around the bush here. They are not surviving that. It's random bad guys in Times Square, am I right? Oh, oh crap, they're at it again. Come on, guys. What? Too much damage. But Baldi, I saved the day. I took all the bombs and threw them at the helicopter and it crashed down. It oh. Yeah, I, I probably should have thought that through a little more, shouldn't I have? No matter, maybe if I save some people from this burning building, I redeem myself and win back the hearts of the media. <laughs> Mr. Incredible, we had one job, man. Disclaimer, Holmes Goldner does not condone the use of violence or aggression except for that time in Skyrim where I hit the praying monks for a whole bunch of times so I could level up my stealth or all of those guys I threw out the building because that was pretty dang funny, not gonna lie. So anywho, yeah, that's the Incredibles for the GameCube. But it wasn't the only Incredibles game to be released. I've got one more to show you guys today. Here it is, the sequel that was released 13 years before the actual sequel was made. The Incredibles, Rise of the Under. Kinda sounds like a good Friday night if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, baby! This game was released in 2005 for PS2, GameCube, Xbox, Windows, Mac, and it was actually kind of confusing at the time for my family. Thinking it was an actual movie sequel when we saw it at Walmart. Yeah, my family didn't really do video games that well. The home console version of the game is actually kind of fun. It's more of just a beat em up where you fight against waves of the Underminers robots. Yeah, that's right, we're going with the robots this time. Guess throwing the guys off building was a little too much for Disney to stomach this time around. The Underminers using robots. Then we don't have to play nice. What are you talking about, man? When do you guys fight fair? You literally froze that one cop guy, and that was in the movie. That doesn't look very fair, and that's canon. You know, when you think about it, I kind of understand why superheroes became illegal. But yeah, like I said, this game is actually pretty fun provided you're playing co-op, but by yourself, it's not that much of an experience, much less a challenge. So since I'm all by myself, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and play the Game Boy Advance version of this game. 
Yes, that is right, there is yet another Incredibles game for the Game Boy Advance. Are you excited? I'm excited! I mean, to be fair, the Game Boy version of the Incredibles is actually my favorite of these games so far. And this one is made by the same folks behind that one, so... Could be good! I don't know... It's the exact same game... Only worse! Seriously, there are already so many problems just starting out this game. For starters, two characters. It sucks. It's so incredibly tedious. Different areas have obstacles only one dude can get past. So you gotta switch back and forth, which is a concept which has worked in games successfully before, but in this game it just feels out of place and doesn't flow right. For starters, look at something like Donkey Kong Country or the Lego games which allow you to switch between characters. In those games, transition is seamless, allowing you to instantly switch between characters without having to get your bearings for the new character. But in this game, you gotta wait through the switching animation and then you're playing with a character with a whole different moveset and playstyle, which is fine, I see what they're going for, but just doesn't work for this kind of game. First game, it made itself quite clear from the beginning that it was purely a beat-em-up game. Each different character was unique with their own playstyles, allowing things to be switched up occasionally. It was fun and it worked. They had their own different levels that worked for their playstyle. Speaking of the characters, holy crud. How could they ruin the Frozone gameplay so much? I mean, I get it. Gotta slow down the pace so the game can be artificially stretched out without having to actually program more and avoid having to come up with any kind of actual plot. Fine, whatever. I get it. But just look at these two gameplays and tell me which is more fun. This one where Frozone's skiing along, freezing these bad guys, making ramps over obstacles, freezing stuff. Or this one where you slowly freeze the pillars, jump up there, and then switch to Mr. Incredible lift the door. See, in the first game, Frozone's levels were fun and fast and cool. It's nice! But now it's just another thing I had to deal with before fighting more robots. Speaking of, the enemies in this game suck. Not only is it not satisfying to punch a robot cell to blow up, it's also really boring. I mean, the enemies don't even start to the end of the first level, but when I finally do see some, yeah. I'm basically just punching this guy into an invisible wall at this point. But then these guys came out and started drilling me. What is up with that death animation? That is never a pose I wanted to imagine Mr. Incredible in. Paint me like one of your French nerds! Oh, nope, yep, miss me again, miss me again! Can't hit me, can you? Can't hit me, can't hit me! It's been a long day without you, my friend. Yeah, baby! Honestly, at this point, the only thing keeping me from beating this game is just pure boredom. All the other so far at least had a little bit of challenge or at least plot going on, but this one is just like the same thing over and over again. Hey, wanna do variations of the same three puzzle mechanics and mash B and A around some robots until you win? Yeah! I love The Incredibles a lot, but honestly, I think I'm gonna prefer the sequel that I had to wait 14 years for. Disney's had some decent games in the past, like Aladdin, DuckTales, but more recently, their games have always just felt more like cash grabs, trying to help promote their films to their gamers among their audience. But in the end, it's just kind of a letdown, because I really felt like The Incredibles could make some cool games. But in the end, I guess I'll just have to settle with the movie. Or the Lego game. I guess that's a thing now. But I bet you guys are wondering, Vinny Hard? Surely there was something from this game that you have positive feelings about, like something this game had that isn't anywhere else? And you'd actually be right. So fellow nerds and nurses, let me leave you with this Kamehameha. Hey guys, check out some of my other videos and subscribe.